Well, a good crowd on hand for this, the fourth game of the day on the campus of the University of Utah. And a short time ago, Jerry Tarkanian's running Rebs advanced to the next round, and now he's scouting his future opponent. They had an easy time of it against Arkansas Little Rock. The game really was not in question most of the way, Billy. No, it wasn't. It was 4-0, and there was a guy sitting next to me who said, this game is over, and he was correct. I won't mention his name. Billy. <laughs> and it might have been Tark. <laughs> he knew it, too. I mean, it, it was just a matter that they, they had too many athletes uh, to play against uh, Arkansas Little Rock. Rebounding, Billy. Ohio State 15 and Providence 13. The early going here. And one of the reasons for that is Providence playing all perimeter basketball, not getting in position to get any follow up But that perimeter shot by screen puts the Friars ahead, 27-26. Their last lead was 6-4 in this game. They have trailed ever since, but write it down at 324. The senior-dominated Providence Friars go ahead. Good backdoor cut again. Second time today. That time Baker and Jackson. Gent missing, but Robinson rebounding and scoring his third field goal off the Buckeye bench. Murdoch comes in. Great defense by Baker. Baker puts it on the floor for the Bucks, and here's Jen. Excellent lead pass and catch by Murdoch, but Baker, who can really explode both with his run and with his jump, made one of the best defensive plays we've seen here in this region so far. Dean muscling in, and Robinson was there defensively. Wow. See the excellent lead pass. Murdoch makes the catch, keeps his eye right on target, but Baker came behind him, then hits the head, and you can see how well he pushes that ball up the floor. Good job. Jen hits that jumper, gets him off his side. Billy, that last foul was against Greg Bent of Providence, and that's his second of the night. Ohio State leading it now by three. Time left there in the first half. Rick Barnes in pretty good shape, though, with fouls in that front line. A lot of guys in a change room. The only one he can't afford to get in foul trouble, particularly for the second half, is Burton. That's the first personal on screen. And now coming off lunch. Marty Conlon checking back into the game, and Shamsed Dean will take a break. Well, Robinson was a starter earlier in the year, Brent, and a lot expected of him. And right now, he is coming on. I think he's really been the key to the first half for Ohio State. The quality minutes he's played with Carter into a little bit of foul trouble. You know, Billy, that graphic we just saw, it's usually the mark of a good coach when that field goal percentage starts to drop for the opposition because he's made defensive adjustments. But both of these teams, you know, they play the same style and they match up extremely well athletically. So, you know, they ought to be able to shut each other down below what they normally shoot, which is pretty high, 46%. Both teams shoot 46% on the year. Alex Davis checking into the game for Coach Ayers. We saw a game earlier today, Oregon State's game against Ball State. In the second half, they were both shooting in the 20 percentile. Just couldn't get anything to fall. Oh, nice move. Spring throws it in. It's going the other way. They've called offense. No that basket on the shot, and an offensive foul is called. Sensational dribbling move by Carlton Screen. Pretty good call by the referee. It looks like Gent did an excellent job, didn't it, of taking that charge and going down? Well, the problem for Screen is he beat two men with a dribble and gave Gent an opportunity to catch him when he no had nothing left on his dribble to get open for the shot. With that high post Robinson setting, Jackson looking to go back door again. Round three. Off iron, Jackson couldn't get the handle, loses it out of bounds. Providence ball, they trail it 31 to 27. So far in the first half, we've had a total of 18 turnovers, 10 of them by the Friars. And neither team really getting much out of their full court pressure. Providence not at all, and Ohio State pressing just, uh, just kind of like a token press. So that's a lot of turnovers for half court defense. Davis moving his feet really well on Murdoch. I believe the official got in Brown's way as he went to steal that ball just a little bit, and he couldn't 
quite get the angle on it. Ball is out of bounds, and Providence maintains possession with 27 seconds left on the shot clock. Fred, both teams overplay the forward position. Uh, extreme overplay, so backdoor cuts are there, and a guy like Conley can't afford to throw a bounce pass, particularly cross-court like he did, because it's going to get picked off. Losing it out of bounds, Ohio State ball at the 109 mark of the first half. Both of these teams playing solid half-court man-to-man defense. Baker returning. And why is it when you get in the NCAA tournament, games always seem to get tighter? Well, you play in the 30s in the first half in almost all the games. Everybody just a little nervous. Ohio State from three-point land is 0 of 6 here in the first half. Couldn't get it to fall. But Jackson really wheels off those screens nicely. Conlon had it knocked away, but it'll be Providence ball here with 42 seconds left and 39 on the shot clock. Both teams getting back well on defense. Not many easy baskets, even if you have a semi-break going. Lambie Ayers had a great college career down at Miami of Ohio. Started the Redskins for four years. Rookie coach at Ohio State. He's exceeded a lot of expectations with the job he's turned in. Never been a head coach before. He's been a longtime assistant. And here he has the Buckeyes ahead by four, 31-27, with the seconds running down on the first half. Freddie talks about those days as assistant, getting an opportunity to observe all the outstanding coaches in the Big Ten. The Knights, the Katies, the Heath coach. He said that really is what prepared him to be a head coach in a league of that quality. Bob Knight knocked out of the tournament tonight. And Randy Ayers with a chance to move on. Jackson has it stolen. Murdoch moving over on him on the double team goes to Burton. Excellent job by Burton who held Jackson up to allow Murdoch to come back side. So Ohio State will take a lead, but it's only two points. And our coverage will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Kawasaki Motors Corporation USA. Kawasaki, the Good Times Company. The Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. And by AT&T, the right choice. Big Ten leads Big East, but it's a close one, a two-point lead there for the Buckeyes. Jim Nance and Mike Francesco with you from New York. Mike, you said this would come down to the wire. I think it'll be close. I think Providence would like to have a little more up-tempo, force things a little more, and you'll see them try to shoot the three a little more in the second half. All right, Mike. Autopsy results were released today in the aftermath of the death of Loyola Marymount star Hank Gathers. According to the Los Angeles coroner's office, Gathers' heart muscle was found to be diseased, inflamed, and scarred. It was not known what caused this condition. The autopsy study also found no traces of any illegal drugs. Gathers, however, was supposed to be taking Indorol, which doctors had prescribed for his heart condition. Further tests are being conducted in order to determine whether or not Gathers had been following his doctor's orders. All right, in basketball tonight, Illinois, a five seed going against 12 seed Dayton in Midwest action in Austin. This could be the day's biggest upset if the Flyers pull it off. Let's go there live right now and join Frank Fallon and Jack Corrigan with a minute to go. We have exactly one minute to play as it is an 85-81 lead for the Dayton Flyers over the Illinois Fighting Illini. I'm Frank Fallon with Jack Corrigan. We are at the Special Event Center on the campus of the University of Texas in Austin where we've had a humdinger with the Dayton Flyers, the number nine seed in the Midwest leading the number eight seed, the Fighting Illini of Illinois, 85-81, with 55 seconds left to play, and Dayton just committing the foul, sending Andy Kaufman to the line. The fifth personal foul on Alex Robertson is a problem because you have one less guard to begin with. Norm Greedy was hurt late in the first half for Dayton, so it forces Jim O'Brien with Dayton to have one less ball handler out on the floor. Kaufman is three out of four at the strike, four out of five. That cuts the lead down to 85-82 with 55 seconds remaining. Lou were... Henson, the head coach of Illinois, looking on as Kaufman will try to bring his team within two points. And does. These were crucial free throws for Kaufman there. 
Illinois had to be able to cut it down to one possession again. 50 seconds to play, 85-83. Dayton trying to upset Illinois and extend an eight-game winning streak. Boy, Ray Springer was just able to call a timeout. He was in trouble of a backcourt violation, and the senior experience right there by Ray Springer, he called the timeout. That gives Dayton a chance to reset. There are 44 seconds on the game clock, 35 seconds on the shot clock. Springer's in trouble. He's being hounded by Steve Bardo. He knows he's in trouble. He's trying to make the timeout call and hoping that one of the officials could see it. He might have gotten away with taking a little extra shuffle, but that was a heady move by Ray Springer, a senior, grew up right at the Dayton area, trying to extend the Flyers' hopes of moving on and playing Arkansas in the second round Saturday afternoon. Jackie almost fell into the backcourt. His body was like the leaning tower. He was almost toppling over in that backcourt. We want to take this opportunity to thank NCAA Basketball Committee Representative Bump, El Bump Elliott, Tournament Manager Butch Worley, and Tournament Media Coordinator Doug Smith. From Dayton, Athletics Director Thomas J. Frerichs, Head Basketball Coach Jim O'Brien and his staff, and Sports Information Director Doug Housechild. And from Illinois, Athletics Director John Makovic, Head Basketball Coach Lou Henson and his staff, and Sports Information Director Mike Pearson. Well, the situation is simply this. We've got 44 seconds left to play. It is an 85-83 lead for Dayton with 44 seconds left to go and uh, the fouls to give none for either team. I'll be very curious to see what Jim O'Brien decides to do here, whether he's going to run this clock down, try and get Knight into a one-on-one -on -one situation and hope that he's going to draw fouls if he doesn't get the basket to go. This has been like the three previous games here in Austin. We had Towson State give Oklahoma all they wanted. Southwest Missouri made it difficult for a half plus against North Carolina. Princeton nearly knocked off Arkansas before the Razorbacks prevailed by four. And here Dayton, the number nine seed, trying to knock off the number eight seed, Lou Henson's Illini. Right here in front of us as Anthony Corbett will throw the ball in with Urban Small right there in his face. Timeout. Isn't that amazing how many times? All right, we're going to get to the finish of that game in Austin, but right now let's take a timeout as we continue on the road to the Final Four. Five seed Illinois. Let's join NCAA Productions there with 23 seconds left in the game. You're back with us again at the Frank Irwin Center on the campus of the University of Texas. That's the story. 23 seconds remaining. The number nine seed in the Midwest, Dayton, has a two-point lead on the number eight seed, Illinois, with Bill Yule at the free throw line trying to ice this one for Dayton. That is his third free throw here in the second half in a row that he's made. And Illinois now trails by three with 23 seconds to go. The Illini bench knows that if Yule hits this one, it's going to be tough. A four-point margin doesn't get it to go, however. Illinois can tie with 20 to play. Steve Bardo with the ball, 86-83, Dayton. Kendall Gill, the All-American guard, who will take the three-pointer. Bardo. Rebounded by Corbett, foul by Marcus Liberty, his third foul. So Dayton is within nine seconds of springing the upset. As you look at Jim O'Brien, the 37-year-old first-year head coach, for the Dayton Flyers, and they are within nine seconds of winning this one. And don't think for a moment that Jim O'Brien's father-in-law is not a proud gentleman right now. If you want to know, well, who is Jim's father-in-law? How about the legendary Jack Ramsey? There's a little bit of basketball in that family. Well, the guy who will go to the stripe to try to really drive the nail in the coffin is Anthony Corbett. Tonight, he has been to the free throw line eight times, has hit six of them. He's a senior out of Dayton. Nine seconds to play, 86-83. Dayton in front of Illinois. He needs to hit at least one of them. Of course, the first end of it. There's the big one. And it is a four-point advantage, and the Dayton Flyers are beginning to celebrate off the court. Not on the court yet, but off the court, their supporters are beginning to taste this victory already. And Corbett gets another one. They're trying to make it 11 in a row. Kendall Gill 
Goes outside the three-point arc to shoot and nails it. And they call a timeout with three seconds to go. That makes it 88-86 with three seconds to go. All right, we're back in New York. And, uh, Mike, there already has been a five-seed lose today. That was Oregon State against Ball State. But this would be significantly taller upset here. Illinois, a much stronger team than Oregon State. And Jim O'Brien, a Patino disciple, has done what Patino has done. Press, shoot the three, and he may have a big upset on his hands here. All right, now the winner of this game with Dayton leading by two will play Arkansas. The Razorbacks over Princeton tonight, 68-64 in Midwest action. Earlier today in the Midwest, North Carolina over Southwest Missouri State. 20th consecutive year now, the Tar Heels have had 20 win campaigns. Also in the Midwest, Oklahoma, next up for the Tar Heels. In fact, the Sooners uh, a little sluggish today, Mike, against Towson State. I think they found themselves in a tighter game than they thought, and then they had to methodically put it away late. But, yeah, I think that first game, Jim, can be very, very tough. I think you'll see a different Oklahoma team come the weekend. All right, Cal back in the tournament for the first time since 1960 when they were the runner-up in the tournament. And today they beat Indiana 65-63. The Bears got free throws with 3.8 seconds left, two of them to beat the Hoosiers in that one. Also in the East, it was Connecticut, a winner. Connecticut now will play Cal on Saturday, and the Huskies tied an NCAA team record with 19 steals in that game. All right, let's go now for the closing seconds. We're ready to go back to Austin, and let's rejoin Frank Fallon for the close of that one. Come down to one possession now with three seconds left. On the His head's still off. bring in Brooks Taylor, the freshman guard, and P.J. Bowman. They'll have lots of little quick guys and hope they can deny the entry pass. All that Dayton wants to do is get the ball in. When the clock starts, when somebody touches it and Kaufman intercepts it, P.J. Bowman, no, he don't think, I don't think he got the shot off anyway. He did and the shot was after the buzzer, so Dayton has pulled it off. A Final Four team from a year ago, Illinois, is out. A five-seed eliminated tonight. Now, we got to get back to Salt Lake City for Ohio State and Providence with the Buckeyes leading by two. We'll get back to Brent and Billy after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Salt Lake with Billy Packer. I'm Brent Musburger. Ohio State leading it 32-31. While you were away, Screen tied it for Providence, and now he has put him back ahead. That is Carlton Screen's second field goal here of the early going. 18.50 to go in regulation. And a turnover. It goes to Providence. The Friars leading Ohio State 33-32, and this could be a very bleak opening day for the Big Ten. They are one and two with Michigan State advancing in overtime. Indiana and Illinois both ousted here tonight. And Ohio State trailing Providence now by three points as Sean said, Dean Billy puts it in 35-32. Change completely in strategy for Rick Barnes. He's gone to the press full court. And I think also Carlton Screen realizes he's going to have to penetrate some with the dribble. He's doing a fine job here in the second half. On the turnover, Friars ball again. Screen with the knuckleball. Conlon slipping inside and out of bounds off Ohio State. Providence ball. Brent, the up-tempo pace from Providence is much more to their liking. Because Conlon and Shamsuddin for big men and Burton can really get out on the break and finish off. And Gent in that sequence was also assessed his first personal foul as Alex Davis, the freshman guard from Cincinnati, checks in. And Brown will sit down. Gent also goes out as Ayers immediately goes to his bench having fallen back. 35-32. Buckeyes led at the half. 31-29. The Providence in the first half outscored Ohio State 9-0 with three-point shots, but they didn't get much going on the inside. Jackson hands it back to Baker. Good collapse in defense, preventing Carter from getting much going here in this ballgame. Here's Jackson trying to take over. Missing again. He's only two of seven now for the game. 
But you made a good point while we were away that he's forcing things a little bit offensively because he sees nobody on his team putting any points on the board. Here's Davis on the pull-up. His second field goal of the game, 35-34, Flyers with the lead. Davis has been in a more than a mild slump the last 10 games. Bingo, three. Chris Watts nails the three for the Flyers, and it's 38-34. four for threes in the first half, but Watts isn't afraid to put them up. Buckeyes still searching for their first three of this game. Carter muscles in, and this is a layup. Shops at Dean with the rebound. Nice help by screen that time, because Dean was really out of position. Conlon's open on his side. Ayers complaining that there should have been a foul called at the other end. Now he accepts the explanation. 16:47. We've got a timeout in Salt Lake. Providence leading it because of a 13-3 run. Well, Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten, has had better days. His conference now one and two, but for every unhappy story, there's another side. And right next to him is Dave Maggard, the fine athletic director at the University of California. The Bears beating Indiana tonight. So they advance in the tournament. Ball knocked out of bounds by Burton. Excellent up-tempo now being employed by Rick Barnes with a full-court pressure. Seems to be to his team's liking. For Ohio State here in the second half, they really haven't found an answer offensively to get anything going at all. Davis hits a three. That's their first three of the game, Billy. Well, in seven games prior to this one, Davis has only scored 29 points. Had the big 20-point game against Northwestern. Other than that, he's really been shut down. That shot looked very good there. Jackson on Sean said, Dean, big mismatch in size. They can't get him the ball. Looking for the lob. And I'm surprised Robinson hasn't gotten any playing time start of this second half. He had such a good first half. Down. And foul before the shot. And a reminder that at the conclusion of this NCAA tournament game, we'll select the Chevrolet players of the game. And in conjunction with the award, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund to both schools. Uh, Brent, the, the foul was initially called on Carter, but it wasn't his foul. It really should have been Davis's foul on the way in. And if that was, if they actually let that stand, it'd be Carter's third. Ayers was unhappy in that he shot, acting like it uh, is going to stand on Carter. We're going to check with the scores table just to make sure. First word was that it went to Davis. Murdoch missing the free throw, but it's tapped back to him. Ayers Burton scored the three. Randy Ayers called the timeout to get organized. His club really having problems against this press. is taking them out of their offense. A young team facing the unexpected here in Salt Lake. Davis under pressure from Burton buries the jump shot. Davis, even though he's a sub in the double-figure score, he does have that explosive jump shot. Trying to go now to Car the man Carter's guarding, which is Sean said Dean, trying to pick up the fourth before Ayers can get him out of the game. And Carter's had some monster games, 29 and nine rebounds against Michigan, 18 and 13 Illinois. So against big teams, he's had some great games this year. Be a big blow for Ohio State if he had to sit down. Conlon missing from the outside, but he has range out there, so it's not unusual if you're not familiar with Providence for him to take that shot. And at the other end, the three by Davis. Trenny does, Conlon does have range, but you want to get Carter down inside now. Now Conlon goes to the inside. 47-42, Providence with a five-point lead and 14-27 left here in regulation. 
Friend, you see that upset tonight, and that was an upset with Dayton beating Illinois. You can think of Mickey Donahue and Roosevelt Chapman the last time that Dayton made a nice run in the NCAA tournament. Jackson has it stripped away. Regained by the Buckeyes, Carter with a miss, and now it's Providence ball. This is Murdoch. Carter almost came over the back on that rebound. Tomlin again low with a hook shot. Nice time. Just think of Marty Conlon sat out you know he just couldn't take it anymore a year ago two years ago and, and was going to give up basketball decided to come back and did sit out the second half of the season and he said since rick barnes came on he got back into the swing of things it was an excellent job and carter with a chance to complete the three-pointer as he moves up to the free throw line billy to follow up on that story for Conlon and Shamsuddin Dean and the seniors on this Providence team. They played for three coaches in four years. It's been a real roller coaster ride as Carter muscles his way in here for the Buckeyes. Draws the foul. Shamsuddin Dean there on him. Well, they had the golden moments with Rick Pitino going to the Final Four. Then Gordy Chiesa came in and it just didn't work out for Gordy or the players on that squad. And Conlon, I guess, uh, uh, had the toughest road to hoe of that bunch. And then, of course, Rick Barnes came out of the scene, and uh, things have moved back uphill. He completes it as Robinson now checks in for the first time here in the second half. Bill Robinson out of Canton, Ohio, he's a seven-foot sophomore. He scored six points off Ayers bench in the first half. I thought he was the key to the lead Ohio State had. Those were very valuable minutes. Only picked up one foul and had, as you said, six points. Allowed Carter to sit down for most of that time and not pick up another foul. Good Murdoch patiently moves inside. Shamsett Dean with an offensive putback for the Friars. So remember the first half, Providence had but one offensive rebound that they were able to put back up for a score, that being by Burton. They're doing a much better now job now with balanced scoring. Well, the story of this first day is clearly the Big Ten Conference. They came in with seven teams, a record for a conference, and two of them have been knocked out tonight. And Ohio State trying to stay alive as Davis puts in the field goal, and it's 51-47 Providence with a four-point lead. Of course, their one win was in overtime. Judd Heathcote's club just getting by. Dean Murray State. with a nice pass, and shots at Dean Muscles in for the Friars. You notice every time Screen drives, Ohio State tries to plug him in, and Screen's doing a good job keeping that dribble under control and able to make some excellent dishes inside. Shams said Dean with eight points off several of them. He's also pulled down eight rebounds, playing very strongly for Providence tonight. Robinson had him on his back, but they didn't get Robinson the ball. Still has him there. Jackson's been quiet the last few minutes. Gent missing the three. Shams said Dean going up for the rebound is fouled by Robinson. We've got a timeout at the 11.52 mark. It's 53-47 Providence. It's a quiet afternoon in Ford County. Was he shopping? Yep, since you had a fistful. With Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger. Randy Ayers, the first-year coach at Ohio State, is a marvelous story. He's from a family of eight. His father left the family when Randy was seven years old. Four brothers and three sisters. Six went on to earn college scholarships. All eight have graduated from college. And someday Randy hopes to reconcile with his father, but he really credits his mother with the great effort in getting all the children educated. And now he's a head coach of the Big Ten, finding himself trailing Providence here, 53-47, and his point man, Baker, ships over to the corner. Jimmy Jackson, been silent for a long time, was not shooting well in this ball game, but he's never felt looking for that shot again. And Davis has been the man of the hour. 16 points for Davis. Another Friday night game coming your way from the NCAA tournament. And it's one that you really have a lot of different thoughts about. Loyola Marymount against New Mexico State. The Hank Gathers tragedy. Uh, Loyola Marymount to carry on in his honor. Bo Kimball going to shoot his first free throw in that game left-handed. And 
Yet New Mexico State out of the Big West is a quality, perhaps underrated team. And, and we'll see how they perform. Santa Barbara with a win today would indicate that maybe Loyola Marymount will have its hands full in that one. But, geez, so many emotions in that game tomorrow night. Green's free right on the money. You cannot fake with the ball and the head and your feet any better than Screen did. He just paralyzed Davis and got the jump shot off without using any dribble or Screen for himself. You know, Davis is perfect this half, Billy. He is 6 of 6 for the Buckeyes. Well, off the bench, they've had Robinson with a good first half and Davis with a great second half. Other than that, they've really had problems. Another super steal. Baker has it stripped. And the foul against Ohio State. That's on Jackson, the freshman. Well, just to put it in perspective, Murdoch came into the game with 73 steals. And Carlton Screen was 64 on the year. And that's a twosome reminds you a little bit of Mookie Blaylock. The way he used to handle things in Oklahoma. You know, they steal it from behind. They take it off the dribble. They have good anticipation. Carlton Screen has one thing, though, that most youngsters shouldn't try to emulate, and that is a shot that goes up like a knuckleball. I don't think I've ever seen anybody with a rotation on the ball quite as crazy as this one. And I was like, I don't know how you could make it spin that way. But it works. Yes, 14 it does. points for Screen in this game. Shooting 86% for the foul line. Nobody's changing it. Providence leading it by eight. Ten and a half minutes to go here in regulation. Jackson coming off the wheel has really been solid. Baker. And that's a two. What Rick Barnes is getting is good play off his bench in terms of quality minutes so he can rest Conlon. We are playing at al altitude. And so I think his bench is, is just as deep as Ohio State's in terms of quality minutes he can get from his big people. Renag fouled on the end. No, he traveled. No foul. That was just an excellent job by Robinson inside not to chop. That's good officiating, too. He was thinking about calling the foul on that. And the man traveled, and he turned it over. So it'll be Ohio State ball. Jackson with one field goal in the last 28 minutes. So they have quieted the freshman here. Burton certainly doing a good job. Now Murdoch has switched off on Jackson, who wants to get back into the offense. This is Davis. He's had the hot hand, not this time. Burton got a piece of that one. Look at Dean run that break. Runs the floor beautifully. Yes, he does. Man. And catches the ball extremely well on the move. Well, the Buckeyes of the Big Ten down by eight to Providence of the Big East. And you notice uh, something that I think that Rick Barnes is doing that's really smart. He showed the press and it worked for him, but he's not keeping it on all the time. So I think he's saving it so that when he gets down the stretch here, if he needs to throw it back, he can. Another steal. Place to go. That's just down number 14, Eric Murdoch. And that's a case where Murdoch oh, needs to really pull up at the foul line on this one. Another steal. Murdoch has got a three-on-one break. You can see it developing right here. But there's no place to go down the middle. The only thing he can do is charge on that play. But again, Brent, this is a club with a lot of senior experience and an awful lot of tournament experience, and it's showing in this ballgame. Ten-point Providence lead. They're packing that man-to-man -man back in tighter and tighter. That's what's opening up the shots for Davis and Baker on the jumping. In the first half, Ohio State led it by 8, 18-10. And with Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger, and now it is the Providence Friars. So it's an 18-point swing in this game with the Friars' biggest lead of the evening and 8.30 to go here in Salt Lake. When you think of the Final Four, both of these teams have great Final Four tradition. Ohio State getting there three years in a row in the early 60s. Back in 1939, they were in the Final Four. Uh, this great Jerry Lucas, John Havlicek teams of the early 60s. Might have been before Rick Barnes was born. Two of the younger coaches, Billy, in college basketball. 
Ayers, 33 years old. Barnes, 35 years old. He's out of Hickory, North Carolina. Conlon with the rebound. Now it's Murdoch on the inside. Conlon coming up over the top of Carter commits the personal foul. And for Conlon, his second. That big body, body of Carter's is able to keep Conlon out of there. So UConn advances. Look who they'll meet next on Saturday in Hartford. It's the California Golden Bears. Clemson. Oh, it was a heartbreaking loss for BYU. Lionel Simmons put up 32 points and pulled down 16 rebounds. And the team with the best record in the tournament continues to roll along. Those are the Eastern Finals tonight, the NCAA Tournament. But those are the kind of stats you think about a player putting a team on his back and carrying them on through there. And Jackson cannot carry the Buckeyes here tonight. Those are Larry Bird, Danny Manning type stats. Now a screen getting inside, and it's a 12-point Providence lead. An 11-2 run for the Friars. It's always great coming to Salt Lake City, especially with the professor of hoops, Billy Packer. Billy, what do you do with an afternoon off for the NCAA tournament? Uh, Brent, I got a haircut today, and you know why? I went by a sign that says haircuts $3. Now, I have to pay $4 down in North Carolina, and that, that's $3. I got to, I mean, you know, you have to give $3 tips in Connecticut. Now, I only have a half a head to get cut, you know, but still, I, I had to go for it. I got out of my car. Matter of fact, the car rolled halfway down the hill. Yeah, and you had to take a number. You took a number. It's kind of like going to a delicatessen in New York. They had so many people waiting in line. Great bargain. All right, here's Jim Jackson for the Buckeyes, trying to lead them back in this, and it's Carter with a half in, and it's a 10-point Providence lead. Seven minutes to go here in regulation. Carlton Screen now starting to see the floor so well with his penetration, causing a lot of problems for Ohio State. Conlon's a back screen. Gent got caught with a back screen, nobody there to help him, and he's screaming at his teammates saying, let me know something. We'll see the back screen right there. Murdoch sets it on Gent. Nobody on the weak side to help. Easy basket. Well-conceived play by Providence. In the first half, Providence hit only 43%. In the second half, they have upped it to 70% from the floor. The telling statistic here. Well, I think, Brad, a lot of it has been the fact that they're penetrating now, getting the ball inside, not relying solely on the outside perimeter jump shot. And Murdoch almost had another piece. Jackson starting to force a little bit. Number there four. Was contact, and that is his fourth personal. To follow up on that Jackson story, he is only two of ten. You know, I was talking about Jackson and Kenny Anderson and, and coming in and having such great freshman years. They played against each other in high school. Jackson had a bad day, 35 points, 20 rebounds. He starts Bishop Malloy. And against Malloy. Two outstanding players, though. It could be tough for a freshman in his first NCAA tournament game. Well, with the win that Georgia Tech had today by the number of points they beat East Tennessee State, which I thought would be a tough game for him, I imagine Kenny Anderson played fairly well. Murdoch. Shed off with the rebound. Good Long pass. pass to Jackson. And Screen reaches in and fouls him. Providence. Uh, an awful lot of players are getting to be very good at being able to block the ball on the way up. Rick Barnes has done a fabulous job at Providence, and you can hear rumors from time to time about Virginia, and if Jim Valvano ever leaves at North Carolina State, there might be an opportunity there. Dave Gavin and he have talked a lot about his future, and he's done a good job of restoring stability up at Providence, and Barnes has done a good job of recruiting for the Friars next year, and if he keeps that program in place and does a good job in the future, According to Gavitt, takes care of itself. Well, he started off his coaching career 13-0 last year. It's kind of interesting. In the Big East, Providence has only won 33% of their games. Another good cut. Could that be Carter's fifth? Looks like they're pointing at him. Ohio State, number 32, Harry Carter. 
four fouls. That's four on Carter Billy. That's four on him. That was our game earlier tonight, and the winner here will play Las Vegas. And this this was the, the game of the day as far as Salt Lake was concerned. 54-53. McCurdy won it for Ball State with no time left. He hit a free throw after sinking the field goal that had tied it, or they would have headed to overtime. And a very tough game for Gary Payton, the candidate for National Player of the Year at Oregon State. He spent most of the game on the bench because of foul problems. And a tough game for Rick Majerus, the former coach of Ball State, was sitting right beside us. I thought he'd have a real heart problem there. I was really worried about him. He was so emotionally involved in that ball game, having recruited just about all the players. On the inside, Baker is fouled. Shamsed Dean up over. Wow. Let's check that. That's Bragg. And that's his fourth foul. But that's, that's okay for Rick Barnes. You can afford to go ahead and use up some fouls with Bragg because now Shamsed Dean can come back in with a rest, plus not getting in any further trouble. Davis sits down for Ohio State, the man that has kept them in the game here in the second half. Baker, as a junior in high school, led his Dunbar club to state championship. Had to sit out academically as a freshman. Will be an outstanding point guard in the Big Ten next year. The screen recognizes that press. And they turn it over, and Baker comes right back. Great speed to Jackson. 20 of time for the Buckeyes. 66 59, and 5 15 in regulation. Seems like both teams do well when they try to up tempo defensively. Push right. off. Great job by Jamel Brown. Wow. What happened there oh, is that screen really committed a little bit too early. Didn't have the passing angle. Perry Carter did a good job, and of course, Jim Jackson finishes it off. And at the other end, Conlon committing his third personal at the 509 mark. Coach Barnes electing to keep him on the floor right now, and they're going to call a timeout. He's going to bring the team over. So with five minutes to go, Providence calls timeout. Providence, Ohio State, Big East, Big Ten, and two young coaches who go back in time as assistants at Ohio State under a kneeling Gary Williams. And you are left with some thoughts tonight about what Gary Williams might be thinking about. He went to Maryland, his alma mater, and uh, suddenly they don't make the NCAA. They go on probation for two years. So it's going to be a long time before he gets an opportunity to come to what he loves the most, and that's the NCAA tournament, fellas. Very tough break for the university. They are going to appeal. The president. One of the few times you've seen the NCAA put somebody on a probation status where the president, who was very much involved in, in the investigative process, is going to appeal. So it uh, will be interesting to see how that one is resolved. I don't remember, to my knowledge, uh, an appeal of that magnitude taking place before in the NCAA. Seven straight points by the Buckeyes, and they pull back to within five at the five-minute mark. Go to a double low post here. Good Allen taking over in the paint. Just great help defensively that time by Davis. Davis. Guys are back in it. 66 63 now. Four and a half minutes. Funny how these teams have gotten out of sync in their half court offense. First it was Ohio State, now it's Providence. Burton hasn't touched the ball in a long time. State ball. They can tie with a three or pull to within one. And they're doing this with Carter out in foul trouble. Good solid screen set up. Robinson didn't hold it. Good 
good movement without the ball by the Buckeyes right now. As Gent comes free of the right baseline. Beautiful penetration by Davis. He's having a great offensive game. 11 straight points by Ohio State. A one-point lead. Off John Dean's hand. Buckeyes ball. All of a sudden, Providence has gotten into a situation in half court where four men are standing watching the man who's got the ball. They had some pretty good movement before and some penetration by screen, and they've really lacked that in the last two minutes. Against that pressure defense, Chet saw a problem and calls a timeout. Ohio State timeout, 3.30 in regulation. Brian Musburger with Billy Packer in Salt Lake, and the Buckeyes run off 11 straight points. But they have only one timeout remaining, and Providence with three. How much can that work against them here, though? Well, of course, in a game that gets, gets down to the wire, and this one certainly has that potential, you'd like to have as many timeouts as possible. Now, Providence made a nice run with their press earlier in the half. Baker breaks it nicely there and then gets it stolen. Murdoch hands it over the screen and gets it back. Good movement. Murdoch into the paint. Nobody standing around on that offensive set. Baker beating the press with the dribble. What a little motion for Jackson coming off a pick. Here he comes. It might have taken a lot out of the Buckeyes climbing back into this one. Davis. Short. Burton with a big rebound for the Friars. They lead it by 3, 68-65, and 2.40 to go. Screen on the oh, side. Taken away by Robinson. Just smothered screen. Jackson thought about it. Good defensive movement that time by Burton. He had those legs moving. Burton doing a superb job defensively here tonight. Well, you pointed out at the top of the show, that was something that Barnes was worried about. Who they match up? Jackson with the curtain gets into trouble. He has it tonight. Jeff puts it down on Conlon. Now pulls to back it out to Davis. Jump pass to Robinson. Misses the shot on the inside. He didn't realize how open he was, Brandon. He was waiting for somebody to body him. Just threw it over the rim. Three-point Providence lead with possession. Time remaining there in regulation. Any kind of a hell ball situation will go over to the Buckeyes. Also, you start talking about experience here. Senior guards who have been here before. One of them with the ball right now. Carlton Screen out of Brooklyn, New York. Good job by Conlon. Conlon. Steps out, realizing there could be a five-second count. Offense? Yes, yes there is. Offensive foul is called. Uh, uh, Barnes has uh, had one problem as the head coach. In close games, the Flyers have not been that successful. Well, Screen trying to make a play that wasn't there, particularly when you had Ohio State in a bad situation where the clock is working against them. And now the Friars find themselves in a dogfight with 119 left in regulation. They lead it by three. Carter back despite the foul trouble to play it out. Well, you want Carter now to really get on those boards and follow up everything that goes in. Maybe even stay out of the offense and just worry about getting some offensive rebounds. Jackson. Sean said Dean off with the rebound, and the freshman still cannot find his shooting touch inside of a minute. So Shamsed Dean with his 10th rebound gives the Friars an opportunity here to run some seconds off the clock and Jent fouling screen over the limit. Screen an 86% free throw shooter. They're not there yet in one and one, but they will be next go around. Oh yes, they are. front end, Ohio State ball. That wasn't close, Brent, for a guy that is an excellent free throw shooter. Carter backs his way in, and it's a one-point Providence lead. 
They, they do may not. have to foul the Flyers. The Flyers do not have to put up a shot. And they do. Barnes wanted the intentional, but doesn't get it. But it was really not a good defensive maneuver by Davis because it, you better go for that ball. You don't want to pick up one, the intentional. And the officials, of course, don't want to make the call either, but he just wrapped himself around screen. So Screen, who missed the front end, comes back with a second chance. He has 16 points and four assists for the night. Harris talking about when he wants the timeout. Remember, he only has one left. He does have the possession arrow. But Randy probably telling everybody that if they do score, they being Ohio State, he wants the timeout to stop the clock. Three-point lead, so the Buckeyes call time, and they will need a three to tie this up. It's 70 to 67. And again, the Big Ten already has lost two teams tonight. Indiana and Illinois have been eliminated from this tournament. And Michigan State was forced to go overtime to beat Murray State. And now the Buckeyes are down by three but Number one seed, Oklahoma, stretched a little bit farther than they expected today by Towson State. So it's going to come down to a last shot here in the West Regional. Already we've had one game come down to the final shot. That was Ball State of the Mid-American Conference eliminating Oregon State of the Pac-10. Louisville of the Metro beat Idaho of the Big Sky. Idaho played tough for two-thirds of the way in the first half, and then Louisville's superior talent simply wore them down. So March Madness heats up. You know, Brent, speaking about Oklahoma, this is the third straight year they've been a number one seed. And it hasn't been until the Ralph Sampson Virginia years that, that a club has done that with three straight years in, as a number one seed. Part of the accomplishment with all the parity is today in college basketball. Yes. There are the three point shooters that they might be thinking of going to. Jackson has been the cold shooter, and Davis has had the hot hand tonight from three point land, especially in the first half. But Brent, with 28 seconds to go, and I thought that Randy would save a timeout because you can foul to get it back. I think they want to look to go for the two still. There's a lot of time left to go in this game. You don't have to put up a quick three. And you have to think about Davis, who's at the hot hand. And let's see what they elect to do. Screen goes into the backcourt. Now he'll retreat. Just trying to take a little bit of clock off there. Nathan Baker waste some time. Gent sets a screen for Baker, and they will punch it in to Carter. Play. There's the two. As you call, Billy. There's the two. Now, now at the, the 14 foul. second mark, Carter comes over and fouls screen. Not what they wanted, however. That's Carter's fifth, right? I mean, if you're going to call a timeout, if you're going to call a timeout that you know you're going to automatically foul, put Carter on the bench because with the foul, you can get him back in the game, bring a guy that can automatically commit the foul for you. That cost the young coach right there. So Carter leaves with 15 points and six rebounds out of the game at the 12-second mark. And, Brett, the other thing, I think, from a strategy standpoint, you put two men on screen so that he can't get the inbounds pass. You make somebody other than the 86% free throw shooter go to that line. I see. Robinson, Robinson off the Ohio State bench to replace Carter, who fouled out. Providence uh, has a team shooting 71%, so it's not like you have a lot of choices, but this is their best. One and one, Providence leading it by a point. Second team all Big East performer right here. 20 points, none bigger than those two free throws, putting them back up by three, and now the Buckeyes will have to launch a three. It'll be Davis out on top, and he's got it with three seconds, he's tied it. Now, what 
Rick Barnes is asking for not whether that was a three-point shot, but he says he wants three seconds on the clock. To see seven, Davis, who has been the man of the hour, tough three-point shot because he was fading away. There's the timeout, but that doesn't necessarily mean just when you signal it that you, you get the referee to stop it in time. So I don't think Rick Barnes should get that extra second on the clock. Well, freshman Alex Davis has made himself an Ohio State hero here tonight. He is three for three from three-point land, and they are going to change the clock right now, and they're going to put, put four, four seconds back up. That is a lot of time for Providence. Four seconds is an eternity at this point in the game. Well, Brett, possibly what happened there as it went through, what we saw was a, the, the uh, end line referee possibly farther up the court somebody was getting the attention of one of the other officials who stopped the clock or at least tried to stop the clock because really three seconds would have been a plenty watch right as we see right here ball goes through down at four at that point you can see three and the official's hand goes up so i don't know how they got it to four Billy, it was very close marty conlon as it was changing four to three, did have his hands up. I'm not sure when someone saw him or if Ed Hightower, the official over at the table, can help out. There's still well, the, the discussion uh, going on over there. The man running the clock can't stop the clock based on what Conlon did. He can't stop the clock till the official gives him that signification. So I think three seconds would have been about as much as they could have. Now they can use a replay over there for a timing dispute. Exactly. Ed Hightower is talking to the two other officials on the floor, and his second here can make a huge difference. And they're going to change it to three. I, I would agree. So I would it agree. It has been changed. They have used replay. It's legal in this instance, and this is the way it should be. Brett, wherever you go, they fool with that monitor. <laughs> just don't walk over to me. Well, let's just stay on the other side of the floor. Time out here with three seconds. So now what can Providence come up with here, Billy? Well, it's funny. We were talking to Rick Barnes about this just yesterday. He likes to go up the sideline if he can. And he's got plenty of time and timeouts to go up the sideline and then set up a half-court play. You know, Brett, it was very similar to Murray State today. Hit that three to put that, that game in overtime. Billy, let's take one more look at the timing sequence and see why it should be three and not four. I'm sure we've left some doubt in somebody's mind. Well, I, I really thought three was the play. Now, you can see, watch when the official raises his hand. That's when the time... Actually, if anything, it was closer to two than it was to four. So I think three was a fair play. So it'll be three seconds left for Providence. And Ohio State here in regulation. Already one game has gone to overtime today, and that was the win by Michigan State over right. Murray State. On, on a great three-point shot. We get word from the side that the refs on the floor decided themselves to take it down to three and not look at the replay. They are the ones who made the final decision. And no replay was used in determining that, but replay certainly verified their decision. Three seconds is the right call in this situation. Well, you, ha you don't have time to dribble the ball up the court, so you want to get to half court somehow. Carlton screen hesitated and will go to overtime in Salt Lake. Overtime. and Ohio State head into the second overtime of the first day of this NCAA tournament. With Billy Packer and Billy, we head to overtime here in the last game of the day. Overtime and each team gets a timeout extra here. So you've got Providence with two left. Ohio State was out of timeout, so they have one. But one thing you don't get is another foul per player. So Perry Carter is out of this ball game and cannot return in the overtime. He's jumping off to start the five-minute intermission, and Burton misses overtime's first shot for Providence. And the Buckeyes, who made a stirring rally after falling back by 12 points, now with their first possession of 0-2. 
And I go back to the time Ohio State punched the ball and got the two by Carter and then saved the three for later, which was a good move by them. Murdoch on Davis, who had just been Davis lost it. One of his few mistakes here tonight. He has been phenomenal. Ohio State trailed at 66-54 with 6.53 to go, and then they closed with an 18-6 run, and Murdoch missing. Robinson, who is filling in for Carter, yanks it down, and that's his eighth rebound off the Buckeye bench. Really surprised at Providence going back to what got him in trouble at the start of this ball game, which is just relying solely on the perimeter shot. Jackson off the dribble now gliding in to take over. So after a tough regulation, Jackson with the first field goal in overtime. What I admire about him though, Brent, he did not force it when he realized he was not getting good shots earlier in his game. Now Murdoch comes back and gets the ball and the foul and he'll step to the free throw line. Eric Murdoch with 13 points for Providence tonight. And here is what has been effective for Providence. Good team motion in their offense, getting shots like that with penetration as opposed to relying on that jump. Billy and following up about Providence in close games, and games decided by one point or overtime this year, the Friars are only one and five. They find themselves up by one right now. Time remaining in overtime, about three and a half minutes. Well, Brent, they have one thing going for them, and that's experience. Another thing that they don't have going for them, though, is really maybe a go-to guy that can put the ball on the floor and score in a big game. Baker. Ohio State team without a senior. Hanging in pretty tight. Of course, if you play in a league like the Big Ten or the Big East, you're used to these kind of games. Good job by Robinson in that time on Dean. Didn't chop down, just held his position. He has had a very good game. Taking a look at what transpired here today in Salt Lake, the winner of this game, or perhaps we should say the survivor, will play the run and reps Las Vegas on Saturday afternoon. And in the opener here, it'll be Ball State meeting Denny Crum and Louisville. Well, the UNLV game, obviously, was somewhat of a mis mismatch, and we saw a... There's Jerry Tarkin. He'll stay to the end. If there's a game here after this one, he'll be here for that one. Be Dwight Mellon sitting beside him. And the Shark could still be here. That's right. But how about that uh, NBA highlight film that Stacey Ogwin trying to throw the ball off the backboard for a double? Tarkin Tark did Tark not like him. that. No, no Tarkin yanked him on that one. And was so annoyed he didn't even talk to him. 78-75, Ohio State leading in overtime by three. Ohio State ball, a chance now to open up a little daylight here in OT. And they're going to go to a little spread offense, which will be tough to handle because Jackson, Davis, and Baker all handle the ball nicely. and didn't realize that he was open and they've turned it over. Long pass to Burton and Beautiful. the Flyers are right back in it. Well, Robinson, second time that he has not been guarded and didn't realize it. All he had to do is turn around and lay it in. A one point game again. Got to be careful of screen and Murdoch when you try to hold the ball against Providence. He pointed out how good they are at stealing it. Looks like they're content to go back and force Ohio State to play against the clock. Winding down now to 17 seconds. Jackson changes hands on the dribble and couldn't get it to fall. Robinson almost had it, and Baker runs it down for Ohio State. Somebody's open, Burton on the floor. It was Jackson. They get another fresh 45 on here, however. I think it's a good move if they could go ahead and create a switch so that Jackson ends up with somebody other than Burton and let Jackson go one-on-one -on -one again because he 
He's a tough man to handle with the exception of Burton Gardening. They don't have a matchup there. Shot clock is down to 16. Almost had it taken away. Davis regains it. Here's Baker. Baker at the left baseline. That's in by Jackson. He explodes with a tap-in. His most important play of the game. Beat Michigan with a tap-in. Won two games with last-second uh, heroics this year. Howard Walk. Burton down the baseline, and he is fouled. Let's take a look at freshman sensation Jim Jackson okay. exploding here to tap this one back in. Just Great perfect timing. timing. Perfect timing because Burton had him blocked out. So Jackson beat Michigan with a tap in at the buzzer and uh, also a winning basket against Louisville. Smart basketball player, Jim Jackson. Two shots for Burton. Fires are down by a three. It's been the lucky end for free throw shooting to win a game. And you start thinking that two will Providence foul. Because Ohio State does not have to go ahead and put up a shot here. They went Robinson out. wide open. Get him. Robinson likes to Smart clock running. Smart play. And now screen fouls Davis. With 17 seconds to go. That was a smart play by Robinson. You don't need any more points here. Unless you have an absolutely uncontested shot. Better off getting it back out and using the clock. But you're going to wind up with a choice of going for the slam in that situation, Billy, or putting somebody on the free throw line, right? Well, you hope you don't have to do either. I mean, if you've got an opportunity to run out the clock. And Robinson has had rough luck today with nobody's well, guarding him. They're going to have to give him a lesson in feeling without looking. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and screen fouling out with 20 points and four assists. This is eighth 20-point game of the year. And the man going to the foul line has, uh, has done it all for Ohio State. Just a stirring comeback tonight by the Buckeyes. And, uh, boy, there's a lot of teachers in Providence and, and Ohio State are going to have to excuse some sleepy-eyed students tomorrow. <laughs> Billy, it's on about a little after 1.30 back in the East Coast time, and this one's been pretty riveting for a lot of folks, I'm sure, back home. Well, Davis, of course, has had a sensational game. And I pointed out, in his last eight games, he had 20 in one game against Northwestern, only scored 29 in the other seven. We'll be right back for the finish. Yeah, I sure can. We have um, just about hourly flights here on 6th of October, United Flight number 725. Sure, I'll be happy. I'll help you with that. Your flight number Arriving in Tokyo at 5, 10 p.m. Both animals are also confirmed. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. In business class. Yeah, but I think you're in a world fraught with business. phone frustration, people who fly come to learn of a singular exception, where wishes are granted with efficiency and grace. Della Fria Stokowitzki? Is that with an I or a Y? United Airlines. Come fly the friendly skies. Listen up! McDonald's fries surprise is so easy to play, a rutabaga could figure it out. Buy a large or a medium fries or a hash brown, then peel off the sticker. You win every time! <laughs> like a Big Mac for 69 cents, $10,000, or fly anywhere in the world Delta Airlines goes. Who, if that's not terrific, I'm not a member of the Tuber family. <laughs> so play McDonald's fries surprise today. It's the game with appeal. Appeal? <laughs> I love potato humor. <laughs> Well, freshman guard Alex Davis out of Cincinnati's Forest Park High School has had a fabulous night. 22 points. He's 9 at 12 from the field, Billy. He's hit all three of his shots from three-point range, including the one that sent this game into overtime. And he's a 90% free-throw shooter. He's hit his only free-throw tonight. He's hardly the player that Providence needs at that free-throw line right now. Well, you don't have much choices. And as you said, 90% free-throw shooter, 37 of 41. Now 38 of 42 on the year. Not enough to qualify nationally. There were five fellows this year in the nation that shot over 90% from the free throw line on the year. It's a three-point lead. He's got that stroke going now. If you're 
If you're Providence and he scores here, you might as well go for two foul immediately. Don't come back and try for the three-point shot. Down four. So Davis adds two more free throws and curses the heart of the Providence Friars. They can see Jamal Brown into the ball game for defensive purposes. They ought to go inside, try to get two here. That foul. The three. Tom said Dean coming out back and putting it in. They're down by one with five seconds to go. Down by two, 82-80. The three-point shot was missed, and that was a two-point putback by Shams Dean. So it's 82 to 80 with five seconds. Well, Brent, uh, the two is as good as the three when you're down four. So what they had to do is get that two as quickly as possible. With five, you know they're going to foul on the inbounds pass for somebody, and you'd probably try to keep that ball away from Davis. They go to that line still with five seconds to go down the other end, and all you need is two to tie. Billy, we want to thank the two SIDs while we've got a moment. They've done a great job of getting us ready and helping us out for this one. Boy, you really need their help when you walk in and you're doing new teams in the NCAA tournament, and I'm sure all the announcers appreciate it. Steve Snap of Ohio State and Greg Burke of Providence. One of the things about Greg Burke, his brother Tim is a chef back at a country club back in uh, <laughs> Back in Connecticut. Like my haircut. And his mother's very interested in whether the one son cooks steaks better or I get better stats tonight, and I think it's a toss-up. You know, I'll tell you something else about that young fellow. The first game that CBS ever did on television in college basketball was Michigan at Arkansas, and at that time, he was in Michigan. Just starting to learn the ropes, but he's an outstanding SID. Can't go for the intentional foul, but if you had your druthers, you'd like to see Robinson touch the ball. Keep it away from Davis. You know, Davis, interesting, Billy, to follow up on. His, he's the first player from Cincinnati to play for the Buckeyes since 1973. That's a long time that they've been unable to get talent out of, out of the Cincinnati area. Trump said D playing back here as a safety man. Letting Gent go unguarded. Time out called by Jack. That's their last timeout. 82 to 80, Ohio State with the ball out of bounds and a two point lead when you come back. The last five seconds of overtime. 82 to 80, Ohio State with the ball out of bounds and the two point lead. And they get it into Jackson, who's fouled by Burton by the way. One second off on the clock. So he'll be shooting one and one. And as we said at the top of the show, Jim Jackson, multi-talented. He also does a good job from the free throw line, shooting 79% on the year. No timeouts left by either team. Jackson has a chance to absolutely seal this game because if he hits two, he can let, they can let Providence go down and score and just not take the ball out of bounds. The game is over. So the pride of Toledo, Ohio, puts the Buckeyes up by three, and it's going to be a nightmare for the Friars who have this one in hand, leading by 12, and let it slip away. They cannot lose the game. They cannot lose the game because now all you let Providence do, dribble down the court and score and just don't take the ball out of bounds. Matter of fact, Ohio State players be smart to go over and stand right next to their bench. Game is over. Unless they would commit a foul. Let them score. Don't touch the ball. The Buckeyes advance. <laughs> Big Ten wins tonight.
two and loses two, but in both their victories, they are forced to go to overtime. We hope you enjoyed this one as much as we did bringing it to you. As Ohio State on Saturday will play the running revs of Jerry Tarkanian's UNLV. For Billy Packer, I'm Brent Musburger, and our Chevrolet players of this game are Alex Davis of Ohio State. He had a spectacular night with 24, and Carlton Screen playing his final game with Providence.